Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is an internet-based course called Introduction to Microprocessors. We're using the following textbook, and we're on Chapter 5, Building Assembler Programs, and we're on Section 5.7, How to Use Lookup Tables. Lookup Tables. So, we've already talked about the move literal to, literal to W command. It allows us to introduce a, a literal piece of data. When we use the word literal, it just means a very specific number. For example, 10 or 20 or 30. That's what the word literal means. So it allows us to introduce a number like that, a constant, into your program. And that gets stored in program memory, which is your flash. Remember, you have three different sections of, of memory. You have flash, double EEPROM, and then you have RAM, which is your file registers and things like that. So one of the, the commands we learned previously was move LW and uh, that's, so that's good for making constant uh, variables, a constant uh, data. But what if we have a long string of numbers that we want to store? So it would be better to have a, a different command, something that's a little bit simpler to use, doesn't take up um, two, two commands. So this takes up two commands for every every byte of data. So the lookup table is the solution to this. The PIC16 series approach to lookup tables is shown in the next slide and we're going to go over that. The table is formed as a subroutine. Every byte of the data is accompanied by a special instruction called return literal w. So this is a new instruction that we're learning today in our assembly language for the PIC16 series microcontrollers. This instruction is another return from subroutine. So it's like a return uh, command, like we talked about. You have a, the call command and you have the return command. This is also a return type command, but it returns uh, the literal value as part of the operand. So the operand is, is what's returned into the W register. <clears throat> as it implements the subroutine return, it picks up its operand and puts it in the W register. So that's, that's how it works. The, ta the table is essentially a list of return literal to W instructions, each with its byte of data. So let's look and see a little pictorial diagram of how that works. Um, so you have the main program, you have move F, sample number, and then comma zero. That means that it moves the sample number, whatever that constant is, into the W register. That's what the zero means. So the zero, this is the Remember, this is the uh, direct, the destination bit. Okay. So this we call D. When D is zero, it goes to W. When it's one, it goes to the actual file register. Then we have the the command call table. So it's going to jump to your label table. Now what is it going to do, and it kind of shows this little guy carrying uh, 5. I am the W register, I'm carrying a code from the main program which will show which number I must come back with. So we're assuming that sample number is a 0,5. Okay, so this is this is sample sample number. <clears throat> so, okay, it comes here and then it the first command that you have to have in the table is this add WF PCL. So your PCL is your program counter. So remember you have the PC. Now the, the program counter keeps track of where you are in your code. Now the PCL is the low byte of that data. So it's going to what it, this command does is it adds W to PCL. So it takes this value of 5 and adds it to the current value. So the current value is wherever whatever number this is, whatever address this is in your table, it's going to take that location and add 5 to that, okay? But it's going to get applied to the next instruction. So you take this number, actually the program counter always actually points to the next instruction, so you're actually looking here, so that's the way it works. So if you add 5 to this location, that gives you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's actually going to be pointing at 1F. So just always remember that um, the program counter is always uh, 
pointing to the next instruction, not the current instruction. That's kind of the trick to understanding that. So in other words, if you were to add zero, let's say this number is zero, if you add zero to that, then you would actually be executing the next instruction. But in this case, it is adding five, so it jumps down five. One, two, three, four, five. Five spots. And, and that value has one F, so it takes one F and puts in the W register, and then it returns back to the next instruction. So now, since W has your one F, then you can move W to F to port B and so you effectively you're going to move one F into port B. It's going to go into port B. Okay? So that's the way it works uh, with a simple pictorial diagram. And if you have the textbook that we were showing previously, then try programming exercise uh, 5.10. It is on the following website, embeddednowhow.co.uk. Now, we've, we've learned an, a new instruction today, and if you've gone through the rest of the course, we've learned all the, the instructions that have green stars. Now today we have learned the, this star, the one with the red, we've learned today, return literal w. And you can see how it's built. It's built by having the literal value in the, the lowermost byte of the, of the uh, op operand, or the op code, I guess you could call it. So this is the operand part. Um, so the operand is stored in the, in the op code. Now you can see that the, the code, the op code has 1101. So that's, that has to be there. And then the next two bits are don't care, so they're x's. And then the last four, I'm sorry, eight bits has your data. So in this case, it was it was a uh, one f. So that's where, so that's where that is, is stored. Remember, one f, uh, one f is just you know zero 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 one, and then f is one 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 one. So that's what's going to be stored in that location. Also, we're pretty much done with uh, learning all of our instructions, except we have this. We have a couple. We have the sleep command, return from interrupt, and we have clear watch dog timer. But we're actually going to talk about those in chapter six. We're not going to talk about that in this chapter. The only two commands we have left, we'll go over just real quickly, so I can just say that we're done, except for chapter six. Will, are the uh, swap f and the complement commands, and these are pretty simple, so we'll just go over those really quickly. The complement F is really a logical instruction. I really should have covered it during the logical section. Complement just means to invert. So if you have a zero, you, you make a one. And if you have a one, you change it to a zero. So the complement command just does that. So for example, if you do COMF and then you put the file register address and then the destination, either zero or one, then you can, it, let's assume that you have a value in f of 11101010. If you complement that, you get 00010101. So it just simply inverts every one of the bits. So that, that's the complement command. That's pretty easy. Now, and then the next one we'll learn today to finish out our, our instructions uh, assembly language instruction set for the PIC 16 series is the swap f command. And it simply just swaps the nibbles. Now, re remember that a nibble, a nibble is just four bits. So this is a nibble, and this is a nibble. So swap nibble just means it's going to just swap those. So if you do that, you move the 1010 over here, you move the 1111 to the right, and you've swapped your nibbles. So that's what the swap f command does. So that's it. So thank you for watching this series and I hope to see you during the next lesson. Thank you.